Hey gang, so yesterday we talked about slope and started drawing some lines given the slope in the equation. So today we're going to do some more work with equations. So the graph of the proportional relationship always crosses the origin and has a constant rate of increase, and that's called the slope. These lines are always in the format of y equals mx, when, where m represents the slope or change in y over the change in x, like we talked about yesterday. So for number one, what are the slopes of both of the lines in ratio form? Show how you found this on the graph. So what does that mean? All right, so we're going to take a look at A. For A, move this around. We look at from point to point. Now mine's been enlarged, so it's a little bit blurry. I'm going to pick two of the points. If we go from this point to this point, and we go up and over, that up and over is 3 and 1. Same thing here, up and over, 3 and 1. So if we make our ratio now, it would be the up or the change in y over the change in x. So it would be 3 over 1, which is just 3. For B, same idea. We have the same, another line with a couple points. We could start at the origin, but it's not going to let me. So I'm going to start from point to point here. If we count up and over, we are going up three and over four. Same thing if we went from the origin to this first point here. So our slope or ratio, constant of proportionality, would be three over four, which cannot be simplified. So we'll just leave three fourths. Then it says, what are the equations of both these lines? So the equation would just be y equals that number times x. So for a, it's y equals. 3x, and for b, it's y equals 3 fourths x. So the slope, the change in y over change in x, is right in the equation being multiplied by x. Not all lines cross through the origin, though. Consider the graphs below. Why can we say that both c and d have the same slope? Well, look at them. They look parallel. If lines are parallel, they must have the same slope, but let's prove it. If we go from the origin up and over, in this case, we're going up three and over four again. And if I go to this bottom line up, I want to use a different color here. I go from the bottom line up and over. Again, I see three fourths. So, there, I've proven that they have the same slope. They have the same slope because they have the same rise over run, or change in y over change in x. I'm going to add that they're parallel. How does the line of graph C compare to the line D? So now if we're looking at C and D, D is this first one right here. And it crosses through the origin, where C is up a little bit higher. So C starts here and goes up. has the same slope, but starts a little higher. So again, how does the line of graph C compare to D? We could say that C is two units higher than D. Then five, where does the line C cross the y-axis? Okay, so right here is where it crosses the y-axis. Remember, this is y and it crosses at 2. Notice that C was 2 units higher than D, and it crosses the y-axis at 2. That's not a coincidence. You're going to try 6 through 8 on your own. 
So now for number nine, we're going to consider the equation y equals 2x plus 3. Fill in the table below and plot the points bound. Connect with the straight line. So we're doing some work here in the middle to get our y value. We take the 0 and plug it in for x. So we have 2 times 0 plus 3. And then we get our answer for y. We all know that 2 times 0 is 0. Add 3, we get 3. We plug in the 1 the same way. 2 times 1 plus 3 is 2 plus 3, which is 5. Plug in the 2 the same way. 2 times 2 plus 3 is 4 plus 3, which is 7. 3 the same way. 2 times 3 plus 3 is 6 plus 3, which is 9. 4 the same way. 2 times 4 plus 3 is 8 plus 3, or 11. And lastly, plug in the 5. 2 times 5 plus 3 is 10 plus 3, or 13. So now notice, when we filled out that table, if we look at the change in y, each time this is increasing by 2. And over here, it's increasing by 1. That's not a coincidence, considering that our slope is 2. Also keep in mind that the 0 value is 3. Not a coincidence, given that the second point in our problem is 3. All right, so let's graph that equation. We start with 0, 3. So we start at the origin, up 3. Then 1, 5. So write 1, up 5. 2, 7 is right 2, up 7. 3, 9 is right 3 and up 9. And I can't fit the other points, but that's okay. So we're going to take our straight edge and connect those points. Arrow on the end and label with the equation. So looking at that, what is the slope of the line? Well, we kind of already saw that in the equation. So the slope is that 2 over 1 the amount that we were increasing and going over. It's going up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, and up 2 over 1. So the slope is 2. And then where does it cross the y-axis? It crosses the y-axis right here. And that point is at 3 or 0, 3. So I'm going to write 0, 3 here. All right, so let's see where that brings us. Remember at any point, if I'm going too fast, you can pause to catch up. So when an equation is written in the form y equals mx plus b, then m is the slope of the line, and b is the value that indicates where the line starts on the y-axis, known as the y-intercept. So hopefully you saw that in what we just went over. So looking at number 10, we can now graph a line without needing a table. Given the following equation, state its slope and y-intercept, then graph it on the corresponding coordinate plane. So for the first one, a, we have the slope is this number right here, our 2 over 3. And our y-intercept is this number right here, so it's 4. So we start at 4 on the y-axis. So we're going to go up from, up from the origin by 4. And then we go up 2 over 3. Up 2 over 3. Up 2 over 3. Line through the points, nice and straight. Label with the equation. And for B, we have y equals x plus 3. It looks a little weird because there's no number in front of x. But remember, when you just have x by itself, that implies that the number in front of it is 1. So the slope is 1 not a fraction, so we can write 1 over 1. And our y-intercept is this number right here, so we're going to write 3. So that means we start at the origin up 3, and then we go up 1 over 1, 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 until we can't. Draw a line straight through those points, straighter than mine hopefully, and label it with the equation. So now we've learned how to very easily and very quickly graph a line 
just from its equation without having to write a table, which takes a lot of time. So you're going to go on to today's exit ticket, and then you can start tonight's homework using the idea that we went over today.